Good morning, everyone, uh, and uh, welcome to uh, today's webinar. Um, my name is Judy Ward, and I am uh, the events manager here at IIBA. Um, just saying hello, and as you come in, if you want to put in where you're dialing in from on our chat, then we can see uh, where people are from today. Hello from Ottawa and Calgary. I'm also in Canada. Excited to have you here. Hello from the Ukraine and Connecticut, uh, Washington, D.C., Vietnam. Interesting. I don't think we've ever I've ever seen anyone here from Vietnam before and someone from Hawaii as well. It's so good to have you here with us today. Hello, Poland. Hello, Mexico. Hello, Bulgaria. Thank you for being here with us. Hello from hello from Brussels, amazing, and hello New Zealand. We're just going to uh, uh, give it a couple of minutes uh, so that um, uh, we can get as many people online as possible. We are just about to hit two hundred participants, and so uh, we'll just uh, get started in in a couple of more minutes. Okay. Hello from Orlando, Florida. Thank you everyone once again for being here. We'll just give it a couple of uh, more minutes. Hello from Lisbon, Portugal. Welcome today. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Kingston, Jamaica. Good day. We'll give it one more minute where Yes, there is a black square in the middle of the presentation. Um, I'm sure as uh, soon as the presentation starts, that will get resolved. We are we are looking at uh, Ellen's uh, screen at the moment, so he might have something uh, in the middle there. Hello from Nigeria. There we go. Thank you so much, Ellen. Ivory Coast, Grafton, Wisconsin. We are approaching 250 participants, so we'll just give it one more minute. Hola, Mexico. Ciao, Italy. Hello, Belfast. Hello, South Africa. Hello, Nigeria. All right, so we are past our 250 mark. Hello, Poland. Uh, and uh, we will get uh, we will get started uh, uh, with today's uh, uh, webinar. Uh, as I mentioned uh, before, uh, I will be your moderator today. Uh, my name is Judy Ward and I am part of the marketing team here at IIBA. And I'm also uh, within the marketing team, I am the events manager. It is my privilege to be here and to be your moderator um, uh, for today's webinar. As you know, IIBA is an independent, not-for-profit professional association serving the global business analysis community. 
As a recognized thought leader, IIBA is dedicated to elevating the discipline of business analysis, and we provide our global community with relevant tools, resources, and networking opportunities to take control of your career. Before we get started, uh, we just have a couple of housekeeping um, reminders. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the Q&A section of your webinar controls, which is slightly different from your chat. And chat will be quite busy uh, with, uh, you know, comments and um, other, you know, uh, greetings uh, going back and forth. So we would prefer if you put your questions into the Q&A uh, rather than the chat. And uh, we will be answering questions at uh, uh, at the end of the. <clears throat> we will be answering questions at the end of the webinar. Today's webinar is being recorded, and it will be available in our our sorry in the IIBA IIBA webinar, webinar archives, archives page. page. Um, yeah. uh, shortly or within ten days of the uh, of the broadcast. We will also have the presentation that is uh, uh, being used today uh, you, uh, posted as a PDF as well. So today's presentation uh, and webinar is about leveraging the BABOC for better business performance. And uh, our presenter is Ellen Mishra. Uh, Ellen is an author and co-founder of Adaptive US Inc. He has more than 27 years of professional experience in business analysis, requirements analysis, agile software development, and management consulting. LN is the product owner for Succeed, which is Adapter's flagship learning management solution. He has authored more than 20 books on business analysis and has trained more than 5,000 business analysts around the globe. LN has personally guided and helped close to 1300 people and professionals to get the to get the IIBA certification IBA certifications and he has conducted he has more than 3000 workshops in business analysis requirements management agile software project management and six sigma so i'm going to pass it over to ln and i will be back towards the end of today's webinar to moderate the question and answer period over to you ln Thank you, Judy. Um, do you see my uh, presentation well, or do you have any difficulty? Because some some participants have said that they're seeing a black screen. So yes, I can see your presentation, but there's also a black square on the right and a black band on the top. That the top black band I have removed. This one, I'm not very sure how to remove it. Is there a way to minimize it or something? Looks Let like me, it is do there. you have another window open at the same time? Do you have no. two screens in front of you? No, just one. Okay. So you were six, you removed it successfully earlier today. Are you able to do the same thing that you did earlier? Just give me a second. Maybe is there a way to minimize this or something? Doesn't look like. I think we probably have to live with this. Maybe as we move, maybe it will change. Okay. Possibly. I, I'm thinking it will hide itself after some time. <laughs> Fingers okay. crossed. Fingers crossed. Okay. Over to you. No yeah. Thank you. So welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Anand Mishra. I'm the principal trainer and business analyst at Adaptive US. And thank you for joining us today. This is a topic which has been very close to my heart. And this is what I was discussing with IIB leadership team a couple of days back. Uh, and this has been something that I feel every business analyst should learn how to move himself or herself from the project domain to the enterprise domain. So that's something which is very interesting for me as an individual BA. And also I feel that's something very useful for business analyst community. Uh, some of you might have read some of my blogs, books, might have attended some of my training. I also happen to be the first BA in the world 
to complete all seven IIB certifications, uh, which I kind of took it as a mission to do all the certifications. And I personally have benefited significantly from my experiences. So let's see what, are, what can we do uh, with VA Mark. So again, a uh, big thank you to all of you, to team IIBA for getting this webinar organized. And of course, my team at Adaptive US who have been supporting me in all these activities throughout last five plus years. Okay, so here is one quick note for all of you. How many of you participate in your organizational strategic decisions? Maybe you can say yes. If you do participate uh, in the chat, you can put yes or no, depending on whether you are able to participate in strategy decisions at your organization level. So let's get some feedback from all of you. Okay. Sometimes I'm getting yes, no, no. Okay, good. Okay, I actually did a survey on LinkedIn on this particular aspect, and I believe LinkedIn is a nice platform for us to uh, do surveys and get some inputs. So if you see in front of your screen, uh, this is the survey that I ran. It still has got only about 48 votes. Um, I'm expecting to get 100 plus votes very soon. But in that, I actually find only about 20% reporting that they are being consulted or they are participating at the enterprise strategy level, which I would feel a very low percentage given the fact that business analysis is such an important task for every organization. And my aim over the next few years would be to bring this percentage significantly up. That means most business analysts, at least 50 to 60% of business analysts should be able to contribute to enterprise strategy and business performance. So that's what we're trying to do uh, over a period of time. Uh, just a quick bit about Adaptive US. I trust many of you might have heard about us. We are one of the leading IIB certification providers in the world. And uh, we have kind of trained about 10,000 BAs of which about 1,500 are already certified. Another important announcement for all of us, or rather for all of you, uh, we would be releasing one of our latest publication. This is released today, and this will be available to you free uh, because that's something which we believe will aid all business analysts to move from the project domain to the enterprise domain. But why this uh, strong move towards moving from project domain to enterprise domain? Of course, at the project level, we do influence the business. We do make businesses better. But the leverage is a lot higher when you operate at the strategy level. Please understand strategy is so much important to an enterprise. And we, as business analysts, are probably the best suited professionals to help senior management, the leadership team, to do proper strategy and proper initiatives. That's what I'm trying to see and see how we can use BABOC. Of course, not that BABOC is the only resource we should look at, but BABOC can be a good foundation. And I believe many of you have studied BABOC, or if not, then in future, you will definitely spend some good time in learning about BABOC. So that's the reason why we thought of this webinar, that how do we move business analysts from a project business analyst role to an enterprise business analyst role. So this is a very simple framework that we have proposed uh, saying, how do we influence the enterprise or how do we make sure that the business performs better over a period of time? And it all starts with having right goals and right objectives. So we will learn how do we set up right enterprise goals and right objectives. If it isn't clear at this point in time for your organization, how can you make it clear to all your stakeholders? Of course, goals and objectives are not going to be met 
unless we have right strategies. So that's the second part we will talk about. Then among the strategies, which strategies shall we pursue? What kind of change initiatives we will need to fulfill our strategy and go towards our goal? And of course, all these change initiatives need to be managed. And that is what currently BABOC focuses a lot. So if you read the current version of BABOC, it's extremely strong on managing a single initiative. It's quite strong in that. So when I use the word initiative, you can think of it as a program uh, or a group of projects. Um, so mostly our focus has been on making a individual project successful. And if you observe, I have put an arrow, uh, like a rotating arrow here, which indicates that this is not static because environments change, businesses change, and business goals also need to change to adapt to the changing environment, which is something that we need to keep in mind. Many of you might have seen and read about a lot of companies. Say, for example, if we look at a company like Samsung Electronics, which is a very strong leading player in the electronics world today, it started as a retail shop. So from a retail shop, it has become a giant in electronics industry. So obviously, if they would have decided to remain a retail store, they wouldn't have been a dominant player in electronics. So organizations do change their goals, they change their strategies in order to adapt and flourish in the marketplace. So the first point that I'm going to discuss is how do we go about, go about defining right goals and objectives for our organization? It could be a unit or it could be the entire organization that is under our consideration. So here again, I will take the help of BA Box and I'm taking definitions from BA Box. Some of you might have read it. Otherwise, let's take it through uh, this session. So what are business goals? Business goals are the outcomes that every organization is striving to achieve. So the business goals typically could be a position, um, a market position that you would like to achieve um, or something that you want to do for the community that you work on. Uh, so it can be different. So for example, for us at Adaptive, what is the business goal that we want to achieve? It's that we want to be the most preferred business analysis partner to our clients. So when we talk of clients, it's individuals plus corporates both, but we want to be the most preferred partner. So that's our goal as an enterprise. This is what we are trying to do. Again, remember goals can be set for a certain period, but maybe after two to three years, you should revisit your goals. Um, because the environment might change and some of your goals may remain relevant or they may not remain relevant or you may like to expand your goal from uh, one type of customers or maybe over a period of time, we may decide to support other data analyst kind of professionals as well. It's not that we are bound to serve only one community, but that's a decision that you have to take uh, after careful consideration. So goals have to be defined very carefully because this is what will drive the organization towards better performance. So there are a few checks that we can do while uh, deciding about the organization or unit goal. One, it should have long-term relevance. That means you don't take a goal which is valid for three months. That's not something that you would really spend so much time. So this is an enterprise level goal. So the goal has to be a little bit longer term. Then it has to have desired market potential. So obviously don't do things which has very limited or low market potential because uh, markets do shift and already if the market is very small, um, you may not be able to leverage anything from that market. And sometimes also realize that the market potential for certain products or services may be on the decline. So we very clearly see typewriters, um, landline phones. There are so many products for which 
the market potential has really gone down over a period of time. Hardly anybody buys typewriters today. Hardly anybody buys land phones today. So always make sure that the goal that you're trying to do or achieve has right market potential over a long term. Then of course, we must see long-term profit opportunity. That means, um, are you observing that the profits will get squeezed because of certain factors or maybe more competitors coming in, whatever. So there could be a possibility that the profits will get squeezed severely due to whatever reason. In that case, again, that's not a right goal to pick up. And obviously, whatever goal we take, it must be inspiring for the staff members of the organization because all the staff members in the organization are working towards the goal. So if it is not inspiring for them, you probably wouldn't get the best commitment from them. So while setting up these goals, there is an element called external environment analysis, which is something discussed in BABOC as well. So that plays a very vital role. And I'm going to talk about external environment analysis very, very soon. So now, once the goal is kind of defined, then we come down and we define something called objectives, which are mostly measurable. They are granular, they're at a little lower level, they're specific, and they're also time bound. So if you see here, uh, BA Bach actually kind of asks us to follow a very simple principle called SMART, which means every objective should be specific, should be measurable, should be achievable, should be relevant, and should be timed. So for us, if I take a look at adaptive for set 2023, these are some objectives that we have set for ourselves. One, we would like to have 1,500 new customers in this year, then certain revenue and certain profit target. I'm not putting the revenue figure and uh, profit amount in this PPT because that's not something my partners would like me to disclose in a public forum. So that's why I have just put it as XYZ and PQR, although internally we have these numbers available for us. So this is known to our staff members, but not to everyone else. Then we move to the next task, which is to define strategies. And strategy is a very interesting term. People use strategies very vaguely. Uh, so what is strategy and how do we actually come up with right strategies? So let's take a look at BABOC and again, uh, understand uh, how BABOC defines strategy. So essentially, strategy helps the organization to achieve its goals and objectives. Uh, so mostly, if you look at BA Bach, it also says that strategy is to leverage your strengths in the best possible manner. So whatever strengths you have as an organization, you should be able to leverage it. Uh, I sometimes take a strategy in a very simple definition as something that makes you win. So obviously, as businesses, as individuals, we are all interested in achieving our targets winning certain revenue figure, whatever. So our strategy will help us to do that. So how do companies come up with their strategy? So some of the strategic options you can have be many. So some of the things that we are working as a company, one is our constant endeavor to come up with innovative products and services for our clients. So one of the uh, key product that we are working on uh, we do have an assessment system that we created for our students. And we started getting requests from various government agencies, universities, saying, can blind learners use this assessment system? Our assessment system is not ready yet. But then we realized that there are a whole lot of professionals, learners, who are visually impaired. Uh, in fact, uh, I did a very basic search on internet and it said that there are about 12 million visually impaired persons in US alone. So worldwide, it will be a much bigger number. And if I just take a very 
pessimistic estimate of how many of them would be in the learning space or they want to learn something new, I would say maybe out of 12 million, at least 1.2 to 2.4 million learners are blind. They cannot see. And obviously that hinders their learning um, because the current system of providing support to them is very, very expensive in terms of either braille or um, through specialized hardware. But with AI, it is possible to build solutions today where blind learners can be pretty much equally effective like what we do. So what we are trying to do, we are trying to totally shift the visual element to auditory element. So instead of reading the question, you hear the question. Instead of clicking a mouse, you actually say your options. That's what we are trying to do. Similarly, we are also working on a product called Enterprise Requirements Warehouse uh, because we realize that enterprises do not do a good job of their requirements reuse. Because currently, hardly any system is designed in that purpose, including Jira or any other platform you take, which is very popular for requirements management, somehow they tend to miss this aspect. So we said, okay, this is a gap in the market and we will try to take advantage of that gap. Then of course, uh, we are talking to various partners, including IIBA, to see how do we introduce strategic analysis courses because this is one area which is not addressed adequately at this point in time. And there is definitely a demand for these courses. Um, and currently these courses are mostly uh, offered by large universities and pretty expensive, like say $20,000 upwards. Okay, so this is what we want to bring it down to say $2,000 level, uh, very similar to what we do for business analysis today. And obviously, wherever you are looking at your strategy, Keep an eye on your external and internal influencers. And that's something, again, will come from BABA. So this is uh, what BABA considers as uh, strategy, external influencers. So if you look at it, there are quite a few external influencers that operate on any organization, starting with your competitors. Remember? Competitors are always creating new products, new services, and obviously the organization has to keep an eye on what competitors are doing. Customers, customers are changing their behavior, their needs and expectations are changing. Suppliers are again coming up with new products, newer solutions, political and regulatory concerns always remain, and it's also a dynamic, volatile thing. And if you observe, I have put a red color thing for technology because possibly among all these influencers, the biggest influencer for most companies is technology. And some of you might have already experimented with chat GPT and new technologies that is coming our way. And I personally have got a productivity improvement of 10 times because I am asked to create a lot of blogs for the company. And what used to take me about four to eight hours, I'm able to do it between 15 to 30 minutes. So that's the kind of productivity that I personally have gained because of new technology. And I believe every organization, every individual can leverage technology to make himself or herself fantastically more productive. Then, of course, macroeconomic factors are something that we always have to keep an eye. Um, you have economic cycles. So sometimes uh, the economic cycle is in the upswing. Sometimes it's in the downswing. So based on that, again, you have to adjust your strategy. And a lot of things also depend on industry structure, where you operate. Uh, some industries are highly competitive, and some industries tend to be monopolistic as well. So these are all the factors that we above gives us. Uh, to consider when we are trying to define our organizational strategy. Similarly, um, there are also internal influencers which we need to keep an eye on. So 
the first ones are of course our stakeholders um, because stakeholders will obviously influence whatever change we're trying to make sometimes they like the change they support the change sometimes they don't like the change and they don't support the change and we need to manage stakeholders very well um, in fact in ba Bob, there is a specific technique available for managing stakeholders so do take a look uh, i in fact consider ba Bob to be an amazing source of techniques uh, and of course tasks uh, but the techniques are super uh, well described for all of us. Then look at our enterprise capabilities and processes um, because these are the capabilities help us to move forward and processes also make us more efficient and more effective. Then what kind of technology and infrastructure we are using? Is it getting obsolete? Um, so, and technology is getting very, very obsolete very soon. So you should find ways to upgrade your technology and infrastructure. Policies and rules that we have formed for ourselves to manage ourselves, but often they also become redundant or obsolete. So do not think that the policy worked in the past will continue to work in the future because the future or current generation is different from the past. And the future is going to be even more different. Then business architecture or organization structure, the internal assets that we have, all these are again influencing on our strategies, but I would always say, don't put too much um, emphasis on this because some of them could actually be losing value or contribution. So if you feel certain policies have become obsolete or certain processes have become uh, very stringent or very bureaucratic, often it happens, uh, you work with a client or an organization and the processes have become a lot more bureaucratic for one odd incident that happened. So always look at uh, how you can re-engineer these processes to make them more effective. Good, so obviously now it's the time to define our strategies. And obviously we need to define different options that we can pursue as an enterprise. This is not project strategy, this is enterprise strategy. So one very common thing a lot of companies do is cost leadership, but you have to be very careful because cost leadership uh, can uh, result in extremely competitive environment and then every company loses in that process. Innovation is again an amazing strategy which is used by many organizations, Google, Apple, Microsoft, many companies rely on innovation and that could be a good strategy for your organization as well. Customer intimacy is again a very important and useful strategy. And I've seen a lot of organizations following this because when you develop intimate understanding of your customer, your customer also loves you and likes you because you understand them very well. And that always makes a difference while working with you. Then deep specialization could also be another strategy focus. Like we as an organization are extremely focused on the business analysis domain. We don't do any other thing because we recognize that as a small organization, as an emerging organization, it's good to have deep specialization or focus so that we can become best at what we do. Uh, earlier, we in fact had many more offerings we had project management training, Six Sigma training, uh, ITIL training, all kinds of things we had, but we cut them down because we wanted to be deeply specialized. And how do you think which strategic option will work for you? BABOC again gives you a technique called decision matrix, uh, which you can use to evaluate these options and think which option will give you the best. And of course, it's not necessary that. Um, because I follow deep specialization, I cannot follow customer intimacy strategy. Two things can go very well, but maybe cost leadership and innovation may not work very well because they're typically antagonistic to each other. Typically, I'm saying. Okay, then whenever we think of any strategic option, we always have to look at the risks that each strategic option brings. Because options are different, 
some may bring more risk and some may bring less risk and how much risk we are also willing to take as an organization. So that's why risk management becomes very important whenever you are looking change management. So whenever we are looking at a better business performance, we want the organization to change. And unless the organization changes, it's not going to get better performance by doing things that it did two years back or five years back. So that's what BAVOC also gives us. And it also gives us a way to measure risk, which is mostly on the impact and likelihood of that risk mat, uh, materializing. That's what it is saying. And obviously, in what time frame the risk may occur. Coming next, um, now that we have uh, defined our goal, we have defined our strategy, this is when we think of defining change initiatives because this is how we make the change happen. And again, we rely on VABOC and in VABOC, you will study about a technique called gap analysis. So in gap analysis, what we are trying to do, we have a desired state in mind, uh, we have a strategy in mind, and we do have our current situation, current capabilities in place. So how much is the gap and what are the areas where we need to improve? So the gap could exist with respect to processes, functions, our competencies, training, technology infrastructure, anything. Say, for example, we as an organization, uh, we embarked on a journey to uh, address data analytics needs of the organization. So we started creating content. We started identifying experts in the field who could support us. And that's how we, uh, we have a fantastic trainer by name, Tom Tomasovic, uh, who is from MIT. And he is spearheading this initiative for us because it's a very specialized skill again. So, and data analytics is again something that a lot of business analysts are looking to learn. Then obviously by this time we have identified change initiatives and we also need to prioritize these change initiatives. See, let's remember every organization has limitations in terms of its effort, energy, time, money. It is not having all the money, all the time in the world to pursue all the initiatives. That's something is disastrous. So obviously, when we look at the initiatives, we try to prioritize them using their benefits, our readiness, cost structure, timeline, investments. These are very important things. And here again, we can use VABOC techniques such as business model canvas, capability map, and quite a lot of things. So these are all the techniques that we also have uh, put in, in our strategic analysis uh, book, which you can take a look. And a lot of them are actually coming from VABOC itself. Then the last one is to, of course, manage initiatives because just defining initiatives doesn't make it happen. And this is where BABOC is extremely strong. So it's very powerful in making us understand that whenever we are carrying out any kind of initiative, we need to be very clear about the needs that we are trying to address, the stakeholders that we are going to get involved with, the value that we wish to obtain, the context, the prevailing situation for us, the solutions that we have in our mind, and the changes that need to occur at different aspects. Maybe organizational structure, maybe our processes, maybe infrastructure. A lot of things can change because of solutions. So there, this BACCM will be pretty handy. Then again, uh, remember, uh, BABAC actually gives us a very nice framework for managing initiatives. Uh, and here again, we have planning and monitoring. Here also we have strategy analysis, but this is essentially initiative strategy, not enterprise strategy. So please distinguish between them. Uh, so this is our initiative strategy. This is again getting into details of customer requirements, stakeholder requirements. This is to obtain all the information that we need to create a new solution. And of course, making sure that the solution 
works for us. If not, how can we make it work for us? And of course, remember, requirements leave for a very long life. So BABAC advocates that we take care of requirements over the project life cycle and beyond the project life cycle as well. And there are so many techniques that we can use here. And in fact, what we did, we kind of created a nice mind map for all the techniques that BABOC has and tell us, uh, tell, guide us with respect to which techniques can be a lot more helpful during strategic analysis. So if you see here on the strategy analysis, few techniques like balance scorecard, business capability analysis, business case, business model canvas, decision analysis, decision modeling, financial analysis, risk analysis, quote analysis. These are very important techniques for strategy analysis as well. Whereas requirement analysis and design is something that you may not use that much at enterprise level. I'm not saying that you will never find it, uh, but these are probably more at the initiative or project level. And of course, planning we can always use for initiatives, um, any kind of initiative you need to plan. Um, collaboration is something always there for any kind of uh, activity that we are doing. So take a look at this uh, technique map, and we are also going to create another technique map, which is more aligned towards strategic analysis. And you will find many of them appearing there as well. Then coming to which all areas adaptive can assist your organization. So these are few pointers about us. So as an organization, as I said before, we focus on business analysis. And if you see here on the top, data analytics is something that we have started newly and we are getting a good response from our students. Uh, product ownership is something that has been created by IIBA. And a lot of these things we follow from IIBA as well. And, and already IIBA has a set standard for our agile analysis. BABOC can be pretty much used for good requirements engineering as well. And this is the area that we are trying to see how do we collaborate with IIBA and come up with some uh, nice framework for strategic analysis. And we as an organization focus on BABOC training, uh, thorough BABOC training. And I think we do probably about 800 to 1000 hours of BABOC training in a year. So wherever you are in which part of the world, uh, you will definitely find be about training happening in your time zone for you. Then we are also venturing into consulting. Uh, we have fantastic senior consultants on board. And if you wish to work with us, uh, we would be happy to support you in any of these areas like BACOE setup or data analytics COE setup or agile analysis COE setup. We can definitely help you with that. Uh, our product journeys are relatively new. I think. Uh, the first product that we released last year is an assessment product, uh, which is doing quite well. It's built on top of Thinkific platform. This year, we plan to release two more products. One is an upgrade for the assessment system for the blind students. And the second one would be the enterprise warehouse product, requirements warehouse product. Uh, so these are some of the companies that we closely work with. IIB is, of course, one of them. Uh, we are also a Microsoft startup. Uh, we also work with Cengage and Ed2Go, which are large university connect programs. Uh, we do have a partner in Australia called IRM Training, uh, another partner in US called IEG Consulting. Uh, Scope Master is, again, an interesting company which does a lot of automatic requirements defect detection. Uh, it's a lovely product. So if some of you want to do uh, up to 50 use cases, it is free. So do try them out. Uh, then we are also partnering with LaCroix Institute in Canada, uh, which is going to launch our products in French language. So we don't have expertise in French. So LaCroix will be an amazing partner. Uh, similarly, we also work with PMTSI, uh, which is into Italian language products. So mostly we are looking for partners around the globe uh, who can support taking the business analysis training 
and products to non-English speaking countries. And there are plenty of them, Japanese, Chinese, Vietnamese. So I believe uh, BAs exist in almost all parts of the world and in good numbers. So again, as I said before, we do provide good learning models. Um, virtual, digital, on-premise uh, can be any mode that you folks are interested. Uh, all our trainers have minimum 25 years of the experience. Um, so, and of course, we have been known for our quality content. So these are the places from where we operate, uh, from Ontario, Ohio, California, Romania, Bangalore, Singapore, and Sydney. So practically, you can see South America is left out, Africa is left out. But I'm hoping that someday soon we would also have uh, someone from our team or a partner working from there. So these are the uh, experts that we have on board. Uh, we are keen on expanding our experts portfolio as well. But we, as I said, we are extremely choosy about whom we select as an expert because we do not want any customer to complain that uh, the person that they worked with wasn't really competent. So if you see here, three of us have been involved in uh, BAVOC authoring team, uh, question setting team. So that's the kind of quality of experts we have on board. So these are some of our most recent uh, corporate clients that we have acquired and we're hoping that this year uh, the numbers and logos will become a lot more. But they come from various parts of the world, uh, US, Canada, Australia, India, uh, Europe, so almost every part of the world the customers come from. So in fact, you can read about thousand plus success stories, thousand plus customer reviews on our website. Uh, and all these people are people whom you can reach out to if you wish to reach out to them. Finally, coming to the interesting part of the webinar, uh, please take a note of this link. I'm going to copy this link on the chat window as well. And you can go ahead and download the book. Here. So if you just, it's just a short link I created. Uh, so this is the book which you can download here. And I'm going to show you a glimpse of the book, what it contains, uh, so that it will become a little bit more uh, interesting for you. Uh, so this book has 67 techniques focused on strategic analysis. And as you can see here, a um, lot of them like affinity diagram, balance scorecard, benchmarking do come from the book, but we also have other techniques like uh, say the Boston matrix, then business events, business perspectives, um, change of perspectives. We also made checklist as an independent technique, conflict resolution techniques, um, then ecosystem map, lots of new techniques as well, job analysis, Kano analysis, large scale intervention techniques. This is again very helpful if you're trying to make a change at the large scale. Um, market analysis is of course there in BABOC as well. Uh, McKinsey 7S framework, um, minimum viable product, organizational context model, Pareto principle, again, Pareto is a very simple principle, but very, very effective. Pistol analysis, Porter's five forces, Porter's value chain, um, product roadmap, purpose alignment model, uh, rich picture. So you'll find a good mix of uh, what VABOC provides an extension to them from other uh, areas as well, like Six Sigma, um, value modeling. So it's a good number of techniques from BABOC and new techniques as well. Uh, and all of most of them do come with very nice diagram, uh, which you like. Okay, so you can, and it's a very cleanly written book. 
I'm glad my team does a fantastic job of creating nice books for us. And I hope you guys will like it. So few pages are on us that I'm going to skip. Okay. Yeah, see, for example, if I say affinity diagram, how does it actually look like? So you can take a clue. Um, so we have spent considerable time uh, in creating the ebook, and I trust you will like the book. And if you have any feedback, do write to us. Uh, if we have missed any important technique that you feel um, should be there, we would be happy to include that as well. So that's it, Judy. At this point in time, I will stay the, I'll keep the presentation on this slide because this is something that we would like our participants to read and enjoy and learn. So thank you so much, uh, both for your presentation and, and for this link. Um, this is an uh, uh, in, important work that you're doing and uh, we appreciate not only the updates on the work that you are doing, but also all of the uh, information that was shared today. Um, we do have a, a few questions. Uh, Katia has uh, asked you to explain the ERW better. What is that? I didn't get the question very well. Yes, can you explain better the ERW? Um, I am not very sure if I said something like that. Uh, can you please say what is that ERW? Because it's not coming to my mind at this time. Maybe I didn't okay. pronounce it correctly. So if you can write Enterprise, something down. Enterprise Requirements Warehouse. Ah, okay. Oh, you made an acronym of that product. Okay. Uh, enterprise well, not, not me. <laughs> but yes. Possibly, I think so. So ERW <laughs> as a product, what it does, it takes all your past requirements from various projects and it intermesses it with the project context. So you can actually see requirements which are needed in healthcare domain in Australia which have been done in the past. So that automatically helps you if you're doing the next project in the healthcare domain in Australia, you can see requirements for that. So that's the first level of the product that we're building. Second level, we also would like to use AI to make your requirements more explainable and easy to understand. That's what BABOC also suggests that take a project specific requirement and convert it into a more generic requirement. But that's phase two. That may not come this year. Maybe it may come next year. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, so the next question is, how do you prove your metal to transition from project level ownership to strategy level and enterprise level ownership? if the organization doesn't give you those opportunities? Okay. Uh, Alan, opportunities are to be grabbed, not to be given. So please keep that in mind. As you make yourself familiar with this concept, understanding, you start participating, you start giving feedback okay, to your leadership, saying that what I see lacking in this particular strategy could be this. So once you start contributing, reviewing, providing feedback, your management will take a view. Okay, Alan understands this. So you have to show that you really understand these topics and you are capable of providing valuable input to management. Management is always looking for valuable inputs. See, they are also interested in making the organization better, like you are interested in making the organization better, that's their responsibility as well. And in fact, it's their accountability as well. So they will always be keen to get right inputs. Um, of course, Olivier has a question, does low code, no code? Obviously it can be used. Uh, we are in fact experimenting with some no code, low code application. And I believe there are good products coming up that market is improving significantly. Uh, although my experience with 
the current versions aren't so good. Uh, but I am personally very hopeful that in about three to five years time, they will become more commonplace. Awesome. There's also a question about how to calculate probabilities for the risk assessment matrix. Okay. One simple thing you can do is to think of a rating scale. So mostly what we try to do uh, is to see if the frequency of that occurrence is likely to be once in a month, likely to be once in a year, likely to be once in five years. So based on that, you can take a rating scale. Um, there was a question about whether the presentation will be provided. Yes, it is. The, the uh, webinar is being recorded and the presentation will be provided in PDF format as well. Um, there was Just to give a... one answer to Kariba, uh, ERW is not a benchmark. It is a product. Enterprise Requirements Warehouse is a product that will help you in reusing your requirements better. It's not a framework, it's an actual product. This is that we are not ready with the product to demo, so we are not doing, are able to do it today, but I'm quite hopeful this year, we will definitely showcase it to the business analysis world. Awesome. Thank you so much for clarifying that. And then there was actually a question on the webinar chat that said, what is service-oriented architecture? Okay, that's an interesting question. A service-oriented architecture essentially tries to encompass a service, uh, like a functionality, you can think in that simple way, uh, that can be used by any application within your organization. So it's it's an, like an external facing interface, uh, which applications within your enterprise can leverage instead of the functionality being built into or inside an application. Okay. Okay. Um, what are the, uh, Juliana asks, what are the main boundaries between the strategic BA and the product manager at an agile mindset enterprise? Okay. Uh, think, Juliana, the strategic BA is thinking at the enterprise level. Some of the outcomes of the strategic BA activities could be to develop a new product. Then the product manager comes into picture. It could be to do many other things. It could be to look at merger. It could be to look at outsourcing. There are so many options in front of the organization to do its activities. So product manager is essentially an offshoot of a strategic initiative. One of the initiatives could be a product. And then, the, of course, the product manager takes care of that particular initiative. So I, I consider strategic BA to be at the level of consultants or strategic consultants. But the good part is you are part of the organization. So you understand the organization very well and you consult your top management. Well, thank you Think so much like for strategic consultant that. to your top management. Good stuff. Um, and there is a question here. As an IIBA member, I want to introduce concepts and knowledge from Babok in my organization. Am I legally allowed to do so? Of course. In fact, there is a guidebook called BA Standard, which is free for everybody, whether you are a member, you are not a member. And it actually encompasses a lot of concepts of BA Bok. So you are not legally allowed to say BA Bok. But the standard uh, that is published by IABA for free, that is a summary of the above. You can take it that way. Okay, okay. great. Right. So we only have so we uh, uh, one minute left. Um, thank you so much again, Ellen, for being here 
uh, today and for your great presentation and great resources as always. Um, just wanted to announce that um, uh, Adaptive US next webinar is going to be on the 23rd of May. So keep your eyes out for the registration link uh, and for um, any other information upcoming about this next webinar. Uh, I would like to thank everyone for being here today. A reminder that the recording and the PowerPoint will be posted within the next text 10 business days in our uh, in our website. If you have any questions uh, uh, following the event, you can always reach out to Alain. He has uh, shared his contact information during the presentation. Um, and once again, thank you everyone and have a great day. We will see you next time. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, everyone. Take care, all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.